Hey there, Louis Ecobellis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Microsoft Teams Perspectives sample app. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials. Also, be sure to check me out on Twitter and Instagram to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my new content. Last but not least, if you're interested in learning more about the tools that I use to produce these videos, check out the links in the description below. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now what exactly is the Perspectives sample app? Well, first off, a sample app is one that Microsoft built using its Power Platform, which includes Microsoft Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. Microsoft actually built and released a series of these apps, including the Milestones app, the Bulletins app, the Inspections app, um, and the Employee Ideas app. If you're interested in learning more about how to use those apps, check out my other tutorials. Now these sample apps were really built for two reasons. One, to showcase the power of the Power Platform, and two, to showcase the extensibility of Microsoft Teams when you actually use the Power Platform. Now what is the Perspectives app used for? Well, the Perspectives app is described as a place for your employees to talk and to be heard. So it allows you to create topics, and then under those topics, you can actually have collaborative discussions where people can uh, reply and upvote discussions. So it's really just a place for you to share information, perhaps post frequently asked questions, um, and allow your employees or individuals in your organization to have discussions collaboratively. Now let's go ahead and let's check out how to use the app. All right, now there's a few things that you need to know before I actually show you how to use the Perspectives app. And the first thing you need to know is that this app at the time of recording this tutorial is currently in preview stage. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, that means that this application is actually not available um, to be added to a particular team through the Microsoft Teams um, app store, which you can get to by clicking on either the add a tab button or by clicking on the more added apps and searching for it. Now, for example, if I look for the Perspectives app, I'm going to see this because I've actually done what is called sideloaded this app. Now, sideloading is where you actually download the app installation package and manually install this app into a particular team in Microsoft Teams. If you are interested in testing out this app, uh, by sideloading it or by installing it yourself. I have posted a tutorial. You can definitely go ahead and check out that tutorial. You'll be able to download this install package. Microsoft has actually made it available for free. Once you complete the install, you'll actually be able to go in and use the application. Now, the other important note based on the fact that this app is in preview stage is that by the time it hits general availability, uh, it's possible that this app may actually have changed. Okay, so definitely stay on top of um, when this app is going to be generally available and check out the release notes. And I will definitely be sure to create an update once this app has been made generally available. Now, the next thing that you need to know is the Perspectives app gets added to a channel of a team. Okay, this is not like OneNote or Power Automate or Tasks by Planner and To-Do, meaning you can't use this app outside of a team. It's meant to be added as a tab for use inside of a team. Now, when you actually click into the Perspectives app, uh, you'll notice that you end up on this landing page here. Now, again, the Perspectives app is really about sharing information with your colleagues. So the way that this app works is you will actually create topics. So you can see here when you install this app, there are a few um, sample topics already created for demonstration purposes. So for example, diversity and inclusion, hiring, uh, career, power apps, and if I click on the scroll button, you can see some additional ones. Now within a particular topic, you can actually create discussions, okay? So topics are sort of the high level uh, parent, if you will, and then below that, you go in and you actually create some discussions. So you can see I clicked into the power apps topic, and there are currently three discussions here. The first one is how do I use power apps with more than one user? Uh, the second is should we create records with Power Apps or Power Automate? And the third one is using Power Apps to track inspections. Now, the next thing you'll know about these discussions is you can actually see at a glance how many responses um, have been provided on a particular discussion. So again, the whole point of this app is you create a topic, 
Uh, and then you have your users come in and have discussions. People can respond to discussions. Uh, and then the next element here is the vote. So you can actually upvote discussions. And to do that, you can just click on this um, thumbs up button and you can see that I upvoted it here. Now you'll also be able to search. So I can search for uh, terms in a topic in order to drill down into a particular discussion. So you can see I typed in records and the app automatically showed me um, the discussion record where that search term is displayed. Should we create records with uh, Power Apps or Power Automate? Um, and you can also sort discussions either by upvotes or responses. So again, really the key is um, as you're having conversations and discussions with your colleagues and people are sort of voting comments or perspectives that are being shared, uh, you want to perhaps expose the most popular um, or you know, perhaps the discussion that has stimulated the most engagement in, in the form of responses, okay? Now to go back, you wanna go ahead and click on the back button. Now you'll also notice on the landing page, the search, this is actually going to allow you to search for a particular topic. Okay, so if I start typing um, INC, it's going to filter down the list of topics and show me diversity inclusion, which is a match to my search parameter. Okay, now scrolling down, uh, there is a grouping here for new discussions. So anytime somebody creates a new discussion under one of your topics, that's automatically going to be displayed here. And you'll also notice that there is going to be a label for the um, topic that that discussion was created under. So how do I use Power Apps with more than one user was created under the topic of Power Apps. You'll also see again at a glance, the number of responses um, and the number of votes. Now, if I scroll down again, you're also going to see another grouping, which is the most active discussions, okay? Uh, so this is meant to show you the discussions um, under the topics that have been created that have garnered the most engagement, that is, that have had the most responses. So these are sort of two set um, groupings, if you will, or filters on the actual landing page. Now, in terms of permissions, uh, at the time of creating this video, there really aren't any settings or permissions for this app. So once you actually add it to the channel of a team, uh, as a tab, as you can see here, uh, everybody has access to do everything in this app, which is either create topics or to go ahead and just create discussions, post replies to discussions. Now, because this app was built on Microsoft's Power Platform, again, if you have experience using Microsoft Power Apps, you can actually come in here and customize this application uh, to fit your specific requirements. Now, the next thing that we'll do is we'll look at how to create a topic. Uh, and the first thing that you want to do is click on the Add a Topic button. Okay, and when you're creating a topic, you wanna to go ahead and give it a title. So I might call mine uh, Microsoft Teams Training, for example, and then I'll put in a description, discussions about MS Teams Training. So it's pretty simple title and description. Um, and then you can choose to have an image uh, for your topic as a cover. So you can have an image and you can use one of the presets or upload your own by clicking on add new, uh, or perhaps you just want an icon and you can click on the icon and then select from the out of the box icons. So I'll just go ahead and select an icon here, okay? Uh, and then to actually save your topic, you wanna go ahead and click on the save button. If you wanted to cancel, perhaps you could just hit cancel or go back. I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see here that I have created this new topic called Microsoft Teams Training. Now, if I click into this topic, uh, what you can do here is you can actually create new discussions. So to do that, I would click on the new discussion button and we'll look at that in a second. You can also um, create a link to perhaps an existing discussion or conversation that has happened or that has occurred um, in the post tab of a team and we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, or if you perhaps made a mistake with your topic and you wanna edit it, you can just go ahead and click on that edit button and this is going to bring you back into your topic card where you can amend either the title, description, change the image, or if you wanted to delete it altogether, then you could do that as well. Now I'll just go ahead and click on cancel. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new discussion. So I'm gonna click on the new discussion button. And when you're creating a discussion, again, it's very simple. So it's a title. So I might say, does anyone 
know how to use the Teams Perspectives app. And then I'll just copy and paste that. And again, context is just um, you elaborating on your discussion and I'll click save. And you're now going to see that this discussion has appeared under the topic. Okay, and again, there are currently no responses to this and there are no votes. So I'm gonna go ahead and upvote this. Okay, so it's got one vote and I'm gonna now click into this discussion. Okay, and again, I can go ahead and now add a response. Now, because I am the creator of this discussion, I also have the option to edit it. So again, let's say you uh, created a discussion and you found out that you made a mistake. Just clicking on that little pencil icon is going to allow you to come in here and edit it. Or if you wanted to delete it entirely, you could as well. So I'll click cancel. Uh, and now what I'll do is I'm going to add a response. So I'll click on the add a response button. And again, really it's just this little input uh, box here, uh, which supports rich text as well. So I'll just say, check out Louis Yacobelis's tutorial. And I'll go ahead and click add. And you can now see that the response is sort of listed here or nested under this particular discussion. Now, when it comes to responses, what you can also do is you can actually mark a response as being helpful. Okay, so to do that, you wanna click on this little thumbs up icon. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to add um, a label here that says recommended. Now, I have noticed this with my testing. Uh, you may see here that I'm actually clicking on this and nothing is happening. I've seen a few instances of this. And again, because this app is still in preview stage, this might be why. Um, you might see some issues if you actually go ahead and sideload this app to test it out. Now, I'll just go ahead and back out of this, okay? And I'll back out again to our main page. And so you can see under the new discussions heading that my new discussion appears here because it was just created. So does anyone know how to use the Teams Perspective app? It's part of the Microsoft Teams training topic. It has one response and one vote. And if I click into it, uh, again, you can see the response that was listed there. Now I'll go ahead and try to click helpful again, and nothing is actually happening with that helpful. So again, um, if you are seeing some issues, it just might be because this app is still in sort of preview stage. Now what I will show you is I'll show you an example of where a response has been tagged as helpful. Uh, so I'm just gonna come into one of these sample topics and discussions that were uh, included with the installation of this app. Okay, and you can see here that a response was provided to this discussion and somebody actually marked this as helpful and so that's going to flag this response as recommended. Okay, so it's just another way for you to surface or highlight useful perspectives or uh, discussions or comments that were made by somebody in your organization. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click back. Uh, and really there's only one additional thing to show you in this tutorial, uh, and that's how to link an existing conversation that perhaps is taking place somewhere else in Teams. All right, so I will click into my topic and you're going to notice this existing Teams conversation button. If you go ahead and click on this, uh, again, this is similar to the actual discussion card. Really the only difference is that you can include a link. Okay, so for example, uh, if I click on my post tabs and I wanted to share a link uh, to this particular channel post, I could copy that link. Okay, if I come back into the Perspectives app, and click into Microsoft Teams training, and I click on existing Teams conversation, I could throw the link to that channel post in um, a discussion card. So again, if, you're, if you have a conversation that took place somewhere else, maybe in your channel post, you generate a link, uh, and then you add that link here, uh, and then you go ahead and put your um, title and your context. So I'll just quickly write perspectives, and I will go ahead and just copy that and click save. Okay, now again, I have seen this as well. So you can see I hit save, I added that existing Teams conversation, but it doesn't actually show up here. So again, this just might be because this app is still in the preview stage. Uh, I am curious if you've sideloaded or installed this app yourself and it is working for you, please let me know in the comments so we can kind of uh, compare notes. 
Um, so that's it. It is a pretty simple app. It's a pretty useful app for you to be able to allow uh, individuals in your organization or your colleagues to share their perspectives, their opinions, to have conversations. Uh, and, and you definitely want to come back to my channel to find out when this is going to be hitting general availability. And alternatively, you can just look for it in the Microsoft Teams app store. Uh, that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials. I'm Louis Yacobalas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.